in our modern day and era that we live in with computers and smartphones, with high-tech, low-tech, <laughs> with uh, TVs, Game Boys, Xbox, uh, computers, Google, Wikipedia, there's an ever-growing tendency to think that because it's called smart, it is. <laughs> I wish we had smart Christians, but unfortunately what we have lately has been a rash of ability to divide but rather and conquer, but rather no capability to heal and congel opposing factions that may not be as opposites as they think they are. In lieu of this great giant fear of ecumenism, they're terrified of the idea that, guess what? That brother down the street that you know I really don't like, you know, he just might be the person that God wants you to get along with because you have a rough edge that needs to be rubbed off by butting heads with someone. <laughs> I love it. That's the best place you could be. Get out of your comfort zone. Go into some place you don't want to be. God will lead you there if you let him. But nine times out of ten, most people won't do that. So sadly, in an era where we should be more educated, we seem to be less related to each other. It's a tendency now to just go ahead and say, hey, you know what? That's your opinion. Tough. I'm going on my own. And you know, the Bible warns us of those days that there would come a time when everyone would do that which they seemed right in their own eyes. And that's the best way to describe the internet. People post, write, say, think, do whatever they think is right on the internet. And people follow it, to my utter and total shock. Because in an era where you have people that do whatever they think is right in their own eyes, what we are called to do if we are teachers of the Word of God, if we are inspired by His Holy Spirit to cause people to become disciples, then it's not so much that we tell people what to do, but we give them the ability to find for themselves the truth. We bring them to that interpersonal relationship with God that God speaks to them, and we reassure ourselves that God has spoken to them. So that way we don't come up with this true Christian, true church, true gospel, and those that are in the church are true because they made a true confession and they're really truly saved because truly, truly, I say unto you, God don't truly give a crap about what we think about whether they're saved or not. God knows the heart. And the person that we think might be saved might not be. But the point is this. We do all that we can to bring them into a place of knowing God relating to God, having the Holy Spirit inside them and being able to touch, so to speak, the heart of God so that they would feel and know and hear Jesus. Because if they don't know Jesus, they aren't going to heaven. That's the bottom line. Sorry. Might go to tribulation and get cleaned up or something, you know, but even that's not quite a doctrine that's accurate. But the point being is that we who are wise need to lift up those who are weak in the faith and bring them to a realization that the knowledge of Jesus Christ isn't just some theological principle, but that it's the knowledge of Jesus himself and that it's a personal dynamic that works in a person's life that they can come to the same conclusion as you do if we all share in the same God and the same spirit and the same word. So. I love the idea that the gospel is going forth, but I hate the idea that we aren't discipling people possibly the way we should. So in the morning and in the evening and in noon and at night, seek to follow God and do what is right. Learn to know, to hear his voice, and don't let anyone take you aside and distract you from something else to do something else other than listen to God and do as he chooses for you to do. because. As you walk with God, you should know that some point in time in the day that you did what God wanted you to. Then you have an assurance. And that assurance will take you places that you never imagined.
Starting Your Day Right with Joyce Meyer is a fun little book. I've been enjoying it as I read it. It's my wife's devotional, and she reads a bunch. She's the most faithful little born-again Christian I ever saw. She cracks me up. When I told her to read the Bible from cover to cover, she did. And she's still doing it over and over again. And I'm impressed. I wish I could see all Christians do that. But rain or shine, come hail or high water, she manages to take her little Bible out and read it. And, you know, I'm not going to say that, you know, she sits down and studies it or whatever else. I don't know. But she reads it. And more than that, it's between her and God. God bless her. But in this devotional that she reads, I've had fun. And it says, follow God's spirit. And he who searches the hearts of men knows what is the mind of the Holy Ghost. Whoa, let's repeat that over again. I don't know where my mind went, but it went, Woom. I guess when I talk about my wife, I get distracted. Or is it attracted? Or is it something? I don't know. But the point is, this woman, my wife, is the only one that could make me blush. And it's funny, none other could. Follow God's spirit. And he who searches the hearts of men knows what is the mind of the Holy Spirit and what is his intent is, because the Spirit intercedes and pleads before God in behalf of the saints according to and in harmony with God's will. Romans 8, 27. Many people follow their own desires or other people's advice instead of following the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit is given to each one of us to lead us into the fullness of our destiny and into the fullness of what Jesus died to give us. Your faith in Jesus gives you the promise of heaven. But God wants to work all things together for your good in this life also. See Romans 8.28. Don't be satisfied with receiving half of what Jesus died to give you. Follow the Spirit's leading so that you will get all that God has for you. Seek God for your clear guidance to remain right in the center of His perfect will for every single day. You know, there's coming a day, I can feel it already. Lord, we're going to go for it. <laughs> but I can say this, there's coming a day when I'm going to tackle this perfect will and permissive will because, frankly, that's a bunch of bull. <laughs> God never said, this is my perfect will for you and this is my permissive will, so you get to choose which one you get to do because otherwise we wouldn't want you to get confused about what my will is because after all, I have two of them. One's called permissive and one's called perfect and either way, you're going to wind up in the same destination but one's going to take a longer road and one's going to take an easier road and one's going to go direct. No. Sorry, can't cut it, won't go there and I don't like it. Sounds like some conniving of some religious doctrine. And in case you haven't figured it out, <laughs> I eat doctrine. Love to. Chew it up. Spit it out. See where it's directing, where it came from, and where it's going. Because nine times out of ten, most people that listen to doctrines don't figure that one out, and they don't extend it far enough out to figure out that it was something that was invented in the first place. To explain something that they didn't understand anyways. Which amazes me. So how do we buy into it? <laughs> because we're not led by the Spirit, as the devotional said. But you are not so, brethren, lest ye find yourselves, you know, in such a place that you would be intellectually trying to figure out and stymied by the fact of all these stupid questions that they ask themselves whenever they're saying that they want to find out about God. Why bother? Ask God. If he's not there, guess what? You're in the wrong place. <laughs> or the wrong God. So the reality is, is that we need to be still. We need to stand still. We need to walk with God talk with God, live with God today. When we do, all that God created is ours, now and forever. For even as Jesus walked, talked, breathed, cried, mourned, wept, bled, died, and rose again. He knows me. Oh, does he know me? 
but he knows you. So much so that he died, talked, walked, bled, rose, and cared so much more so about you that he didn't just die and do those things, but he said, I go, and it is better that I go and leave that I might send to you the Comforter. And when he has come, he will guide you into all truth. Don't be stuck on gifts and abilities from the Holy Spirit. Be stuck on the Holy Spirit leading you, because he'll take you to Jesus. And I could think of no better place to go than there. Amen, as they say in some denominations. Amen? Amen. All I say is, yeah, <laughs> let's go.